so bars is a few buttons above 9. You're going to go over to Y bars, choose function, and choose Y1. Bars, Y bars, function, Y1. I don't know, is it in the note packet? And then you're going to put parentheses, list 1, because that's where our X values are. What, Ethan? So once you have Y1 list 1 in there, you're going to hit enter. And that's going to put all the predicted backpack weights. They're all the same. Did you put your equation in Y1? we're quiet and listening, okay? When you have your backpack weight and list, or excuse me, body weight and list one, backpack weight and list two, to get your equation, you're going to hit stat, go over to calc, choose number eight. Make sure it's the correct list, minor and list one, list two. Uh, if you really want to cheat, you can tell it to store your regression equation in Y1 for you instead of having to type it in, although typing it in isn't that hard. So if you want it to do it automatically, then you would just choose bars, Y bars, function, Y1. Tell it to put in Y1, or you can just type it into the Y equals for you. So we get our linear regression equation. We have our y-intercept of 16.265 and our slope of 0 0.091. Okay. Be nice to the calculator. It has feelings. All right, so if I go to y equals, because I told the calculator to store it, notice it's got all those extra decimals. If you just want to type it in, you can. The biggest thing is to make sure that you use that X button, not the alpha and then the store. Use that X button. All right, now we're going to go in and get our predicted backpack weights. Go to stat, go to edit, you're going to highlight L3. Not the first entry, the actual list name. <coughs> Then we're going to tell it to take the equation in Y1. So we're going to hit bars, go over to Y bars, function Y1. Then you're going to put parentheses, list 1. If you don't put the parentheses, the calculator gets angry. Or it multiplies them, one of the two. Just make sure you put the parentheses for list 1. 
Then you hit enter and you get all the predicted backpack weights. Then we want to find our residuals, which is the actual backpack weights minus the predicted. So I'm going to define list four to be list two minus list three. Hit enter. There's all my residuals. You probably weren't highlighting the list name. Okay. Now I can take my X, the body weights, with my residuals and make a scatter plot. And it will give me my residual plot. make a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. Usually I would find all the little numbers and make it perfect, but since this class period is already shorter because of the pep rally, um, I'm going to just make a quick sketch. Um, we're going to skip number two because we haven't talked about S. Yes, sir? Can we not start at zero for this graph? You should. I said I'm making a quick sketch. You should always start at zero for your graphs. Yes. Um, and we're going to skip number two because I haven't talked about S yet. And before we get into the notes, somehow I don't have enough copies and so I'm going to go grab the two copies I printed for Eric and Hannah. to yours, um, which I will add to this, but so yours has pre-printed that mine doesn't. I kind of touched base on this um, last time. What you want to look for with residual plots is that it is scattered evenly above and below the x-axis, so above and below zero, and that tells you your least squared regression line is a good fit. And yes, they actually use those words, a good fit. If your residual plot is curved, the least squared regression line is not a good fit, is a, yeah, thank you. I'm wondering what my, my English skills were there, <laughs> sorry. I would say is not a good fit, but I forgot the word not. Um, you want to look for residuals that increase as your x 
increases. And a large residual would mean that you're looking at an outlier. And we're going to look at that a little later in the notes, how to determine an outlier. And um, I said this yesterday, or not yesterday, whenever I saw you, but um, residual plots should have no pattern. That kind of goes to the scattered evenly above and below, not being curved. Um, but sometimes it's easier if we just see the actual words. Now on your paper, um, it has the question, how can we get a good idea on average how far off the least squared regression line is in predicting ACT scores? I kept the language from yesterday. Why do I keep saying yesterday? Wednesday. Um, because we were looking at the GPA ACT scores. So if you find the average of all your residuals, if we did it with the data today, if I were to take list four and find the average, I'm gonna get zero. Because if it is a good fit, meaning we have a good amount evenly scattered above and below, when we add them, we get zero. So if we were to, don't do this, just watch me. If we do the one bar stats on list four, notice that my average is really, really close to zero. That's because I rounded when I put my linear regression equation into y, so it's not perfectly gonna be zero, but it's really close. And then if I look at the sum, the next one down, if I look at the sum of my residuals, it is almost zero. Again, it's not perfectly zero because I rounded my slope and my y-intercept. If I didn't round it and I had the calculator actually store it, I would get zero for both of those. So on your paper, I don't want to use this pen, it's too light. It says averages average of all residuals and if you do that and you don't have any rounding like I did you're gonna get zero so we can't use the average to tell us how far off our least squared regression line is so we use the standard deviation of the residuals, which is S. And you guys have that formula on your paper. It says it on your paper, right here. Standard deviation of the residuals, S. Mine just doesn't have it printed because I'm using an old one. You do not need to know this formula. It's not one you have to memorize. Um, it will be on the AP um, formula sheet, but you don't need to know how to memorize, know to memorize it. So S comes from taking the square root of the sum of all the residuals squared. And notice it's the residuals squared, because if we just add all the residuals together, we get zero. So we square them to make them all positive, and then we add them together. Just like with standard deviation, we squared the differences. And then you divide by n minus two. What you guys need to know how to do is interpret S.
So down at the bottom of your paper, it says interpret S. So for um, the GPA ACT data that we've been working with, so you might want to put it, but it's the GPA ACT data. S is equal to 1.6. So if we were to interpret that, um, again, obviously my language, English grammar is horrible, so you might do a better job, but when you interpret S, you're going to say something like, when using the least squared regression line, the average error in predicting in this case like I said it's the ACT GPA data so we're predicting ACT scores from GPA is 1.6 points. So on average, we would be 1.6 points away from the actual ACT score. Questions? Yeah. Um, the N in the equation, is that just the answer? <coughs> N is always the number of data pieces you have. So like, there's like For five, six, and seven, like So for the GPA ACT data, we had six data points. So N is six. It's just the number of data points you have in your set. Any other questions? All right. Down below, I'm going to zoom in a little so that hopefully we can read a little more. On yours, I think I go ACB, right? I got rid of B? Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll talk about B a little later, but for now we're going to skip B. So yours already has B removed. So we have a random sample of 15 high school students that was selected from the U.S. Census at School Database. Foot length in centimeters and height in centimeters of each student in the sample were recorded. Least squares regression, that just means they found the least squares regression line, or did linear regression, was performed on the data. A scatter plot with the regression line added a residual plot and then some computer output from the regression are shown below. So we have the scatter plot of the original data with our line, our regression line. We have our residual plot and then we have some computer output down here. So we're going to answer these three questions using that information. So the first question says, what is the equation in the least squared regression line for predicting height from foot length? So if we go down to our computer output information, you're going to look, well, it's usually going to say predictor there, then it's going to say constant, and then it's going to give one of the two variables. In this case, it says foot length because we're predicting the height from the foot length. So this is our x right here. The next column, the coefficient, C-O-E-F, that gives you your slope and your y-intercept right there. So the constant when we're in slope-intercept form is the intercept. So this one right here is your y-intercept. And yes, they always put them in the same order. So it's not going to like suddenly be the last column. It's the first column. 
and the one that says constant next to it is your y-intercept. The one that has the x variable next to it is your slope, because slope is next to x in a slope-intercept form. That one is our slope. So I'm able to write my least squared regression line. So we would say y hat is equal to 103.41 plus 2.7469 times x. The other part of question A should say use the equation to predict the height of a student with a foot length of 27 centimeters. But I don't know how to spell use, apparently. So we're told the foot length. That's our x variable, so we're going to put 27 in for x to get our predicted height. So we would get a predicted height of 177.5763. The height is measured in centimeters. So I'm going to put centimeters on there. Alex. Questions before I move to C. All right, so C says use the information to find the correlation R between height and foot length. And how do you know whether the sign of R is positive or negative? So down in the computer output information, um, down across the bottom, we don't use these columns, at least not yet. Um, so really that first column is important, and then the information along the bottom is important. We'll get to where we use P later on. Um, this is your standard error coefficient, um, which we don't use in this class, and we don't use T. Down across the bottom, You'll notice it says S equals, and that gives you a value. So S is the standard deviation of the residuals, and we're going to use that in part D in a minute. Then it says R squared and R squared adjusted. We use R squared. We don't use R squared adjusted in this class, but it's just part of the computer output, so it's always there but ignore it. It's for a higher level of statistics than we do in this class. So you work with R squared. So I know that R squared is equal to 48.6%. How can I use that information to find R? I would just square root it. Now the only thing, before we square root it, we're going to make it a decimal, because r isn't a percent, it's always a decimal between negative 1 and 1. So we're going to take the square root of r squared, and like I said, we want to make it a decimal, so we're going to take the square root of 0.486, and that's going to give us what r is. So we get 0.697. 
And then remember, like if you're taking the square root of 4, there's two answers. There's positive 2 and negative 2. So we have to think about whether r is positive or negative. What in this information over here tells us that r is positive? Nate? The line is yeah, so, and I think that's what Hannah, you were saying. If you look at your regression line, it's a positive slope, and so r is going to be positive. If your regression line was negative, then we would want to make this a negative 0.697. Any questions on that? Alright, so I'm going to have you guys do D. I already showed you where S is in the computer output. On the above, I showed you how to make an interpretation of S. Just make sure that you don't just copy down ACT scores and GPA because that's not the variables we're using here. We're predicting height from foot length. So I want you guys to interpret that value of S for me.
an average error of 7.95 centimeters off of actual height. See, I told you you guys could have better grammar than me. All right. Can I flip? What time do we get out today? Okay. Still. Right, that's what I said. Where are you going to go? She's just getting it to be prepared. Let her be. All right. On this example, it says Mr. Wilcox is extremely interested in predicting his two children's aptitude later in life. One way to predict later aptitude in children is by knowing the age in months when the child spoke their first word, which sadly more than often is daddy, because it's easier to say than mom. Um, sorry, can you tell I'm a little upset that my kids said dad first? Actually, my oldest said turtle. That was his first word. Uh, my middle was birdie, and my youngest, he said blueberry. First. What the? It didn't sound berry. like blueberry. I knew what he was talking about blueberry, but it was more like blueberry. My dad said I would tell him stories with my hands when I was a kid. And I couldn't speak. So I, was <laughs> I was just like, I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Has anything changed, Noah? No. <laughs> All right. A recent study of the development of young children recorded the age in months at which each of 21 children spoke their first word and their Giselle adaptive score, the result of an aptitude test taken much later in life. So we have our data. We have the kids are numbered 1 through 21, so we're looking at 21 individuals. Their age in months at which they spoke their first word, and then their aptitude score. In the middle of the page is the computer output. Like I said, it says predictor constant, and then it gives you the x. So x is our age, we're predicting their aptitude. Coefficient, so we have our y-intercept and our slope, s and r squared. So really those are the only four things for now that we use from the computer output. So what's the equation of the least squares regression line? 
you have your y-intercept and your slope right in front of you. So I'm going to tell me the equation. Is you it want? y equals uh? Not just y equals y. Oh, y hat equals, hat equals plus uh, negative one. Times. Thank you, sir. And you can put plus and negative, or you can just say minus. So he got the y-intercept from right here. Y-intercept. And then your slope is the one next to your x. What does T and P mean? I'm sorry, say that again? What's the T and P mean? P we'll get to later in the school year, and it tells us the probability. T, um, we don't get into T. Well, we kind of touch on T distributions, but not with linear regression. And then this is your standard error coefficient, um, which we will talk about standard error later in the year, but we won't use it with linear regression either. So we kind of touch on everything, but not all together. Any other questions? All right. Do you guys remember how to interpret slope? What? I taught you guys that. That was like two weeks ago. That was actually three, probably. Pretty sure it was on Tuesday. So it was three days ago. No words. How do we interpret slope? What's the def? What? Yeah, <laughs> that will come into play. Dogs. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. As much as I didn't want to do this with this class. Rise over run. <laughs> it is rise over run. Good job. Dad. That does help us get into. Are we going back to algebra? Kinda. Oh man, I can't make it big. All right, so when it comes to interpreting slope, there's a sentence frame for you. For every increase of one, and then you put the x units in context, there is a corresponding increase or decrease based on whether it's positive or negative of about, and then you state the number, the slope, and you put your y units in context, and then you use on average at the end. I saw Molly take a picture. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, come on, Maddie. You can't get your phone out and take a picture? <laughs> I mean, she already has it, so. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for this one, we would say for every increase of one month of age, because we're talking about age that they spoke their first word and it's measured in months. So for every increase of one month of age, there is a corresponding decrease because our slope is negative, of about 1.13 points on the aptitude Gisele ap aptitude test on average. Sorry, my Y units in context kind of sucked there. Yeah, the decrease covers the negative, and increase would cover the fact that it's positive. Mm -hmm. The, the points on the aptitude test. Can I remove my sentence? What is X? One month of age. Now, the one other thing that I, we haven't talked about yet, well, 
All right, so here it tells us R is called the correlation. It tells us the strength of the linear relationship between X and Y. Find R. So how do we find R from this information? Square root square what? Root. What are we doing? Square root. The R. Which R squared? The first one. The first one. And you got to change it to a decimal, so 0. 0.41. Which would be what? Nobody's going to do it for me? Thank you. Thanks, Molly. Is it a positive R or a negative R? Positive. Negative. negative. <laughs> Slope is negative, so R has to be negative. <laughs> Anybody remember how to interpret R? sentence frame for that one too. Yeah, you do. I don't know if I can fit this one though. It's fairly You'll just swole. have to know yes, fairly swole. You'll just have to know that this is for R because I can't fit it with the the top part. Or the bottom. So an R value of negative point six four points to a talked about the strength, so this would be moderate. Direction is negative because it's negative. Linear association between your y units, which would be the adaptive score, adaptive, excuse me, aptitude score, and the age in months that they spoke their first word. I apologize. This one you might want to, I can't make it all fit. No, this is for R. Yeah. It's for interpreting R. Oh. Hey! Hola. Can I tell them something in Espanol? I suppose. All right. Everybody who wants to picture the sentence frame got it? Because I want to talk about R squared really quick. This one is moderate, yes. Come on, Alex. I it, that is the bottom. In the middle, yeah, around 0.5. All right, R squared, this one's new. R squared is called the coefficient of determination. Do not ask me why it's called that. I don't know. I have asked when I've gone to trainings on statistics. Nobody can really give me a straight answer. Just know that it's called that. It's a cool name. Sure. Um, so R squared tells you the percent of the variation in y that can be accounted for by the least squared regression of y on x. You're going to find r squared and you're going to interpret it. Well, r squared is just the one that says r squared. And that's why it's written as a percent because it tells us the percent of the variation in y that can be accounted for by the least squared regression line of y on x. And that is exactly how you interpret it. So you would say 41% of, and use that. I'm pretty sure I have a sentence frame for that one too. Just because I'm cool like that. Maybe I don't, nope, there it is. Gotta zoom out. 
So for this one, we would say 41% of the variation of the aptitude scores can be accounted for by the least squared regression line. Sorry, say that again. For this example, the y units is the aptitude score. X is age. Are we good? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I am not going to get through talking about the outliers, so I want you to hold on to this. For, um, yes, Monday. I see you on Monday. Uh, before you start packing up, though, here's a sentence frame for interpreting us that we talked about today. If you like my sentences, I know I told you guys my grammar is the worst. For those of you that struggle with making your residual plots, Seriously, Maddie. Today, but you do have to know how to interpret the y intercept as well. Yes, I have a feeling I'm going to have a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's either, my meeting's either going to be before school or at lunch. I just don't know when yet. So. You think I get on email over the weekend? Yo. Monday morning at like 6 <laughs> As I'm on my run, I'll be like, I got an email here. Oh, you ran around my car. I don't remember when it was. I think it was like a week ago or something. Two weeks ago. It must have been on it's a like weekend because uh, 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 yeah. usually I run it like that. Uh, yeah.